Hi, my name's Hydes. I work at Spinal Cord Injuries Australia. Today we're going to take you around Sydney just to see how accessible it is for people with disability. In the 2022 to 23 financial year, there were around 10.7 million overnight visitors to Sydney and 24 million domestic tourists went to Sydney for the day. So let's see how it really is accessible for people with disabilities. So given in two years time, international travel is set to exceed pre-pandemic levels, as people living with disability, we're gonna take a look around Sydney today just to see what small changes businesses can make, how tourism can be more inclusive, and why city planning is super important for people with disability. Hi, my name's Hines. We're here at the Haymarket stop of the L2 line of the tram. G'day, I'm Dan, um, and we are gonna take you from Haymarket all the way down to Circular Quay um, and go through some of the amazing features on the light rail here in Sydney um, after tap on and getting on and getting off. The light rail in Sydney has made great strides in terms of changing transport, especially for those of us with disability. It's made it really easy to get around the city. One of the things to really look out for when you are loading onto the light rail are these disability dots on the ground. It just allows everyone to know where a wheelchair is safe to actually access the tram. And as you can see, lines up perfectly, sticker on the door for the disability, and once the door's open, just take your time getting on. And I guess making sure that you're sitting the right way too when your brakes are on is also important. Um, Heidi and I both don't need brakes at the moment, but having someone, if the train does, uh, tram does stop suddenly, uh, making sure that you're positioned properly where you're not going to fall out of your equipment. Um, another cool feature when you need to use it are these buttons to let them know that uh, the train does need to maybe slow down and take a bit more time for you to exit. Just when you are getting on and off, always making sure that you take your time, don't be in a rush. Um, Rushing is always going to cause injury, so making sure that you take your time, know what you're doing, can see what you're doing as well. Always making sure that there's nothing in the road when you get on and off. If you do need assistance getting on and off the light rail, what's really cool is on each platform they actually have a customer information button and an emergencies button as well. So your wheelchair skills aren't as good to pop over the little gap that they have there. You can actually just press the customer information let them know where you are and that will alert the driver that he can get off or she can get off and help you get on. Just being mindful when you get off, um, a lot of these trams have ramps off the side that lead straight down onto the track. So making sure that you are aware that there's no trams coming and it's safe to use the crossing at the time. Another thing to watch out for are the actual tracks themselves. Being mindful of your casters when you cross over the tracks so they don't get stuck in it maybe having to do a wheel flick, but making sure you don't try and turn on the track. So when we do come to somewhere like the rocks, uh, there's a few ways to get in there. There's a big hill behind us uh, that's a little bit steep and depending on what mobility device you might use or your function, uh, I don't go up here because my wheel just spins out and then I can't make it. Um, and sometimes in when it's a little bit wet, the tiles on the side are a little bit slippery. So for me, I choose to go somewhere that's a little bit more flat, so it's easier to go up. Yeah, and I think too, like knowing that Sydney isn't accessible totally, um, they have tried to do a lot of work, but around here, because of how old the city is, some of the curb cuts yep. aren't actually curb cuts, it's just a small gutter. Um, so just making sure that, again, you take your time knowing where you need to go, planning ahead, and maybe just even asking ahead. Um, there's a lot of people in Sydney you need help as well, just ask. Someone's probably going to be there if you explain what you need to be able to help you up a hill, help you over a curb, or even help you down a curb. One of the big things and keys to coming out in Sydney, uh, the CBD itself has really upgraded itself and made it a lot more accessible. But one of the biggest hubs is the rocks and down here in the tourist precinct of Sydney, uh, you really have to sort of think outside the box, but also just know that some of the places aren't, fortunately, are not going to be able to be accessible due to the fact of the heritage listing. That doesn't mean that the whole place isn't accessible. So some of the cobblestones might be an issue, so always look for an option whether you might go down a laneway or might have to go around a footpath to get over those cobblestones and always make it safe for yourself. Most of this information can be found like Tourism New South Wales, Google, um, or again, as we keep harping on, just ask someone, they've probably already been down here. So these types of curb cuts are what Dan was talking about a bit earlier. They might seem accessible, but they're quite stony, old school. Um, so when you go on around Circular Quay and all the older parts of Sydney, just make sure you're looking out for stuff like this. Sometimes there isn't a need if it's a low traffic area, you can actually use the roadway in a safe way. Instead of having to go up and down curb cuts that you may have a cast that will dig in, sometimes you can actually just guide yourself on the street itself. A lot more room, a lot less issues running into people, and sometimes you may come across the fact that unfortunately you run out of road and you have to find a curb cut to go back up on. So again, it's forward planning and knowing where your location is. 
Sydney's pretty beautiful, um, but again, this is not the modern side of it. This is a historical part. So if you look, the gutters are all still made out of uh, sandstone. So being aware of your casters, being aware of your chair, being aware of your foot plate um, is massively, massively a key when you're here so you don't fall out. And this specific spot is actually where the rocks markets are, famous rocks markets. Um, everyone loves to come here, it gets super, super busy. So yeah, as Dan said, when it is that busy, just be on the ball a little bit more because you might not notice where there might be sandstone. And you may, as I said about the roadway before, you may come up as the footpath is ahead of us now. If there are tables and you're looking at them all the way down and you come to a dead end, you may find that you have to actually come all the way back to find that curb cut to actually go around everything. So again, just being aware of your surroundings and try not to get too stressed in the situation. Some stores that are situated in super old buildings like this will more often than not have a step. Um, but I think what you really need to keep in mind is that even though there's some things out here, it might not seem like it's totally accessible, um, but being inclusive is not just about getting in the building. You know, you can just yell out, everyone's lovely here, yell out, see what you need, and they can grab you whatever you want. So even though it looks not typically accessible, you know, they can still be inclusive and serve you from inside. One of the things in Sydney that has lasted the test of time are cobblestones and cobble streets. Um, they are beautiful to look at and they are, you know, pretty robust because they have lasted so long. However, in a wheelchair, it can make you bounce around quite violently um, and also spasms can kick off. So I guess making sure you take it slow. Um, any other advice? Well, uh, my balance is not good, so I've got to be really careful how I negotiate all the uneven terrain um, because it, it can, my chair can all of a sudden just roll in the wrong direction or... Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, as good as these chairs are, sometimes the pitches can make it lean a little bit too heavy and you could actually tip out. So. Especially if you're on a bit of a lean anyway, yeah, like exactly. the, the road or something. Sydney is notorious for hills everywhere, specifically around here where it's even older to get around. So I think if you don't have something like this or a power assist or you're just in your manual chair, just be wary of different angles because not only will it be steep, but it'll also be going to the right or the left. Um, so, and that just takes a little bit of planning prior to coming. You can have a look at alternative routes around or if you've got someone that can give you a hand. And as we've said a lot, you can ask anyone here for help. Anyone's going to give you a hand. But as for power chairs... Yeah, I guess power chairs is one of the um, better things about a power chair is you have the tilt option if you have it. Um, so being aware not only of your left and right when you're in tilt, but also if the hill is too steep, tilt your chair back so it levels you out. But if a curb cut is too steep, take it on backwards because if you do end up slamming into the back of your chair, you're not going to fall out backwards. You're going to fall out forwards if you hit the gutter. So foot plates always up, lean back and just take your time. Even though you're in the old Sydney, it's not overly hard for an older building to become accessible. Now, what accessibility means to everyone is obviously a different thing, but some companies have actually come out and they've just got a simple ramp to be able to let you access things. So again, you might need someone to come along with you. If you are traveling by yourself, ask someone to go in and check it out. Uh, again, future planning in the city, it's, it's pretty easy and we are getting on top of it, but it isn't perfect. And always remember that it isn't perfect. Um, accessibility to one person isn't always accessible for everyone. So we're still in the rocks here, very popular to visit as some bars, eateries, all these eateries and bars and cafes are all in the, some of the oldest buildings in Sydney. So when you go past, they don't look accessible. So most of them you can't actually get in, in a wheelchair. Um, but what's really cool is in recent years, there's a lot of outdoor dining all the way along down here. You can either order from your phone with a code or you can just talk to the staff that are all sit standing outside on the door anyway. Another massive attraction in Sydney is coming out to our beaches that are absolutely beautiful and one of the major tourist spots is Manly Beach. Uh, we're down here on the Corso in Manly. Not only does Manly provide an amazing access to the beaches itself, but also all of the shops around the Corso are all flat level wheel in. Um, which makes, you've got to say, an easy shopping experience for absolutely everybody. I think too, when we think back to what we were chatting about before, you know, 4.4 million Australians that have disability, which equals $3.3 billion in annual revenue that people can spend on tourism domestically or internationally. So being accessible like this and making sure that people with disability can also get into your store is a huge win for us. Australia is known for anything. It's its beaches, of course. We're down here at Manly Beach. But what do you do and where do you go when you're a wheelchair user? There's plenty of beaches around here that have mobility mats that you can give the local surf club a call to get. 
Yeah, and the mobility mats allow you to access the beach across that soft sand. So even if you are just in your manual chair, it makes it easy to get down to that water edge where the sand is a bit heavier. And it's just not advised to go in your manual chair if you've got one, or your power chair, of course, as well. Um, it can flex your frame and sand can get in all little bits and pieces. Mobility mats are starting to make uh, their way out to a lot of beaches in Australia now. And when you just give them a call, ask them to roll it out, it makes getting down to the water so much easier. Thanks for coming with us today to see what Sydney is like in terms of access. Um, City of Sydney have done a lot to improve accessibility, especially with public transport. And if you're ever nervous about catching public transport, you know, just do a little bit of planning ahead of time. There's always somebody around to help, whether it's a physical person or a customer service button on a different platform that you're on. Hopefully this insight into Sydney's transport has given you the courage to actually get out and have a crack. Uh, as Heidi said, there's always someone out there willing to help. So if you are in need of help, just ask. There are so many nice people out there willing to do so much with everybody. Still got a way to go in terms of access and making everything uh, equal access for everyone, not just wheelchair users, anybody with any kind of impairment or you might just have a sore back. Um, so, you know, we definitely urge people that are in city planning or in small businesses just to look at how they can be a little bit more inclusive, even if they can't typically be physically accessible.